Thank you all for joining us. Today is our final Public Art Fund talk of the 2020-21 academic year at the Cooper Union. We have had the honor of hosting these conversations in conjunction with significant New York City exhibitions like the one we will learn about shortly. My appreciation to the Public Art Fund, an organization that shares with Cooper Union the same commitment to the civic life of New York City and to demo democratizing access to culture, learning, and creative practice. We are so grateful for our ongoing partnership with them in making this series possible as part of Cooper's public programs. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Public Art Fund's Director and Chief Curator, Nicholas Bohm, who will introduce tonight's featured speaker. Nicholas, I will hand things over to you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Adriana. Um, great to see you. Great, as always, uh, to continue our fantastic partnership and collaboration with, uh, with Cooper Union and all of those shared values that you, uh, that you so aptly pointed out. Uh, let me start just very quickly uh, with a couple of housekeeping things. We have closed captioning and that is in the uh, Zoom toolbar that you can uh, access. And we also are uh, hoping that you will submit any questions that uh, you have for Sabine um, as, we, uh, as we go through the talk. Uh, hopefully there'll, there'll be time at the end to, um, to pose some of those questions. So I'll do that if you just use the Q&A button in the toolbar and type in uh, your questions. Great. So uh, I am I'm, uh, here in, in my uh, apartment in New York City and Sabine is going to join us from her uh, from her studio in Berlin, which I'm thrilled is uh, somewhere I've had the pleasure of, of being. Um, and the work we're going to really focus on today uh, is really a work that very much explores landscape and a particular landscape in, in New York City that, uh, when we think about it, really has been a part of human culture for thousands of years as the ancestral indigenous homeland uh, of Lenape Hoking. And I wanna start by offering our respect and gratitude to the Lenape people. Uh, and, and I'm excited to, to see the voices of more and more indigenous artists uh, taking a rightful place and, and sharing uh, and contributing their insights in our ongoing cultural development. So, um, so I want to, um, of course, acknowledge we are, uh, it's um, early afternoon in New York and it's evening in Berlin. So Sabine has uh, accommodated our schedule, which we're uh, grateful for. Uh, and this work in particular I hope some of you have been able to experience. Uh, in June of last year, Governor Cuomo opened uh, LaGuardia Airport's new Terminal B. It's really one of the most important civic infrastructure projects in, in this city in over a decade. And it includes four really extraordinary site-specific art installations. And Sabine's work, LaGuardia Vistas, like all the others, was commissioned by LaGuardia Gateway Partners in partnership with Public Art Fund. And uh, I want to thank our extraordinary partners uh, at LaGuardia uh, Gateway Partners and Vantage Airport Group. And I'm thrilled that uh, the visionary CEO and leader uh, of LaGuardia Gateway Partners, Stuart Steves, is joining us today. Um, so hi Stuart and, and your team who've been such fantastic partners. Um, each of these works I think at LaGuardia really captures the creativity, the diversity and the democratic spirit of our city. They also really reflect I think Public Art Fund's you know, mission and core values. 
that access to great contemporary art should be free for everybody to experience, and that artists uh, should be an essential part of our civic dialogue, that art has the power to spur conversations among different people, open hearts and minds, and really help to shape the future of our country. Sabine's work, La Guardia Vistas, uh, captures beautifully all of those aspirations. And I'm thrilled that she's uh, going to give us today a unique insight into her thinking and process. Sabine works with photography, with sculpture, site-specific installation, and in a way, combining and, and melding all of those things. Um, her long career, uh, of course, has included uh, in a lot of international exhibitions. Her works are included in many private and public collections, including the Guggenheim, MoMA, uh, LA County Museum of Art, the Hirschhorn, uh, the Pinakothek de Moderne in Munich, uh, and many more. I first had the pleasure of seeing Sabine's work here in New York at the Tanya Banakdar Gallery, where she has shown for many years. And uh, a number of years ago, I proposed her for a major public commission in Sydney, uh, which she took on absolutely brilliantly, uh, as Sydney being my own old hometown. Uh, and of course, I'm beyond thrilled that now New York has our own spectacular Sabine Hornig work. Sabine, thank you for joining us today. And we can see that you're in your beautiful studio you. in Berlin. Thank you, Public Art Fund. Thank you, everybody, for joining me in the studio today in Berlin. And um, yeah, so I'm showing, um, I'm going through the work a little bit, and then we can walk around the studio. Um, Fantastic. Uh, I have to go to go back. <laughs> so I think um, Sabine's... <laughs> <laughs> I have to um, go back to the start. So this was the start. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm going back quickly a little bit in, in my previous work. Um, in my work, I often in integrate photography into sculpture so that, so that um, visitors are immersing uh, into a pictorial space through um, a transparent image. This is a work uh, from 19, from 2013. Um, it's a, a wooden construction that has a transparent, that has a sheer fabric printed with a transparent image. And so visitors, the idea is that visitors are immersed into a space that is um, an urban, has a different urban situation photographed. I, I, uh, saw, I saw this work, Sabine, uh, in, this was installed in the Basel Art Fair in Switzerland and uh, a part of, you know, a huge art fair and many, many different installations. And uh, it was so extraordinary to be able to actually walk into uh, a, a room that suddenly transformed into a, a kind of architectural space that, that seemed to transport you to other places and created these interesting layers of image and transparency. Uh, it, was, it was really a stunning installation. Thank you. So you're, you've actually seen it, fantastic. So I, um, yeah, and, and then afterwards I was invited to do this um, project in, in Sydney, what you mentioned earlier in your hometown. And uh, it was actually a walkthrough space. So you see here a little map. It was, uh, these were three international towers in Sydney, about 200 meters high, a bit like in New York and a, and a new building. Um, and um, uh, it was announced as a, as, a, as a public walkway, like an incision into, through the architecture. And, and I included um, indigenous plants that I photographed and mounted them on the, on the entries and exit ways. Of, of the towers. So these create a walkthrough. Here you say, and I've used also inverted images, like negative images on the outside facade and um, uh, on these 
uh, in between spaces, like in between outside and inside, there are transparent images that throw a different reality into the building. The idea was um, to be able to bring in the notion of the land, how it may, it may have looked before European settlement. I thought this was such a, a brilliant solution to a, an incredibly difficult challenge to, to create a work that essentially sort of connects a series of, of big internal circulation spaces. And, uh, and, and you, in a sense, turn that challenge into a virtue and, uh, and, and this, this project is, uh, the development in Sydney is called Varangaroo, um, which is a, a traditional uh, indigenous Aboriginal name uh, that, that uh, of uh, one of the early uh, indigenous women who uh, was in Sydney when the, the British uh, colonizers, um, you know, arrived. Uh, and, and so I, I think you handled that in a way, uh, took that idea. It's a waterfront location on the beautiful, you know, Sydney Harbour. So to evoke that history, uh, in a sense, and to reimagine it uh, was, was beautiful. And these towers were all developed by Lend Lease. Uh, so, so they were excited, I think, to, um, to see this take shape. Yeah, and it was, was uh, my largest in installation then. So this was already 13 meters high, everything, um, these cuts to the towers. And um, afterwards I was, uh, here's another one. So um, it was really amazing to, to dig into, into the history of the plants and to, to photograph all these plants was really great. Um, yeah, this is another one. Yeah, so there is um, the high resolution. I worked with this high resolution camera already then that I used later also in, in, in New York. And it, um, you have a detail very close and, and, and can see also um, the, uh, from the far the image from the far, which is quite unusual. Usually you see large photography in towns only from the far, but never from the, from the close. So you can really go close by and have the texture of the, what is photographed. Um, then I was invited almost right afterwards to, to, uh, uh, to work with, with a space at, at, La, at La Guardia Airport. And it's a, a connector space between the main hall and the parking area. Um, so here is the outside, so you get a sense where it's located. You see the skyline in the distance. What I, I wanted to do instantly is bringing the skyline into the space, uh, because uh, for me, New York, the spirit of New York is incorporated in the skyline. And um, every, everyone coming to New York has always had this, um, this enthusiasm arriving, looking where uh, do I see the skyline, first of all, from, from the airport. And there is actually a window where you see it. So I thought I'd bring it in, and, uh, but I, I wanted to bring it in upside down in the space, that, as if it was um, a reflection, uh, like as if the space was a whole camera obscura. And, and so the sun would, would reflect the skyline into the space. This is a model you will see later on in the studio. Here are images of the model. And I- You know, as we, as we look at this, I mean, you know, one of the extraordinary things about, uh, I think your, your approach to this that was so inventive and brilliant, um, you know, we were tremendously excited about, about working on this new building, really a transformation of LaGuardia, which, you know, was in desperate need of, uh, of an upgrade. And um, yet it's very challenging too, because uh, all the floor space is basically needed for circulation. So it's not like we could just you know, uh, put down a whole lot of uh, objects on, on the floor. And, um, and the design of this new building was also all about fluidity. So there are no straight walls. 
and um, there's a huge amount of glass. So your idea to uh, to create this work, which is which is applied to the glass facade, uh, was such a such a brilliant and beautiful solution. Thank you. Yeah, I really um, enjoyed it as well. It, it was an amazing challenge because of the scale. This is uh, the whole space is 81 meters wide. This is 264 feet and it's um, 12 to 13 meters high, which is 41 feet. So it's amazing. And, and, and I wanted to, to make one image so you could, could, could grasp the image only by walking or understand it only by walking through this slightly bent space. This is an, another image of, of the model. So in fact, I, I worked on this in a very short time also. I went to, to New York in September 2019, shortly after having finished Sydney and then and photographed, took as many photographs as possible from uh, that would match my idea of uh, the intersecting skyline. And then I came and I, I finished it printing in Germany, sent it over and it was installed without me. And so this is the model. I'm and you and you still model. haven't seen it, right? I still haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm hoping to come soon. <laughs> this it's is been, the, the yeah. idea. Yeah. So in <laughs> the idea was what I had. This is I made little drawings when I when I came there. So I saw the space and I thought, oh, the skyline has this intersection between actually two skylines. There is, uh, it's a line going up and down and you have uh, two skylines intersecting like a positive and a negative shape. You could see that each tower has another tower next to it, like a negative tower. And this idea was positive and negative occurred in my, in, my, in my mind. And then I had also day and night. You could have a night skyline inverting with a day skyline and see both in the same image at the same time. Um, and at the it's, same it's time, it's such a it's such a brilliant um, uh, notion of of how to use positive and negative space uh, to to create two skylines, um, which of course, when you talk about it being a skyline, it it isn't like the skyline. Uh, it's it's the composition uh, that you've created, right? Yeah, of course. This is a composition I made uh, uh, aside from the skyline in the in the airport. So here, the skyline that you see, the blonde one on top, is the skyline that is also in the airport, but underneath is different, you'll see. And um, this is more like from the distance. So here is the, the composition, how it is now printed in the airport. We assembled it, uh, this is in my studio. In, in fall, it was photographed in fall 2019. So it was like a plan, it's one to 10 on the studio. The whole studio wall is eight meters, um, 24 feet, it was, was filled with this plan. And um, uh, so you see the columns and, and, the, and the story that is in the middle here in the mouse. This is a story that's closed off and here are two open spaces. So we, um, I assembled this with a team. So we had five computers and worked really fast on these, on these uh, to assemble all the details and images. So I had to, I went really close to the waterfront and photographed the um, um, skyline in the, in the same angle, like the view, um, how the view from the airport would be. So I, I kind of followed the angle, the, the view line, you could say, no? to, uh, to the waterfront and to the skyline and photographed it and then assembled each building or, or groups of buildings back to each other. And then how many, I how many it, photographs did you use? Uh, 1,200 or 1,100 or something, yeah. And, <laughs> And it was, um, uh, so the, uh, the blue, the night skyline is not really a realistic skyline. The upper one more is more like the skyline that you see from the distance, but the, the other is more filled in as spaces that you would um, see in, in Manhattan or from Queens. And, and um, I had the idea that some, some spaces had to be in there and so I, I, it, was, it was difficult, but it, it was also possible to have a continuation between spaces that, that aren't really next to each other. Like you are in Manhattan and suddenly you are back in Queens. And so when you're, when you're walking past. 
And at the same time, I started to research about, or well, I researched from the start about the site, because for me, it was really important not to do only an image that was beautifying an airport, of course, because I wanted to do, I think public art has to have, as you said earlier, somehow not really a message. We don't want to be educative, but it to has to have like a, a, um, a different layers or a democratic spirit. So I wanted to keep the democratic ideas and spirit of New York and, and emphasize it. And, and I read about Fiorello Lagardia, the mayor, who was mayor in 30, between 34 and 45 in New York. And he was such an interesting figure. So reading a book, the first book I read was by Ronald Bayer. You, I, I really recommend it. But also other books about him was really amazing. And I, I was especially interested in his quotes, in his expression. So in, in short expressions, he would have so much impact in it, so much expression about city life, about the urgent qualities that had to be the urgent life, uh, urban planning that he, he wanted to improve about the um, problems between poor and rich or social problems, immigrant groups between different immigrant groups. So he wanted to improve the, um, a lot about the city and put this into very short, strong exclamations. And I thought this would be amazing to include into the image. Um, so I researched with a team, of course, thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, and read about eight books and also a lot in, the, in this amazing New York Times archive. So um, the archive is great and, and uh, extracted these quotes. And um, yeah, made tests also about how I overlay them. This was in a sketchbook notebook. Um, yeah, his, 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 his quotes, quotes I found really current today. Still like, like for example, this very um, famous quote, there's no democratic or Republican way of cleaning the streets is from 1934. And, and so I, I thought it would be amazing to have this, um, the photographs of the contemporary city and then uh, the quotes applied onto them. So you would walk past um, a space, see the contemporary city, but you can also go close and, and zoom in uh, because it has a high resolution. And then you have, have suddenly a text which irritates you, like in, it requires more courage to keep the peace than go to war. The thing, why is this in an airport, you know? And then you <laughs> see Fiorello La Guardia, 1947, and then you think, oh, it's, well, it's true for all the times, no? <laughs> and so on. So I made all this list of, of, of demo, um, whatever, of quotes. There's another one which I like. The success and progress of our, our republic cannot be measured in terms of skyscrapers or reserves in banks. This is from 1922. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, uh, it, it was such a kind of thoughtful and, and, uh, and I think really, you know, um, engaging way of, of extending the layers as you talked about it, of meaning for the work. Uh, and, and it is extraordinary. And, you know, it, when you were creating it, um, you know, they seemed immediately very, very topical. Um, and even now, uh, you know, we're in New York City, we're, we're sort of leading up to a new mayoral election. So, uh, so ideas about the city oh. and its future and, and how it should be run. Uh, of course, it, it all remains incredibly topical. Um, and, and LaGuardia's vision was obviously, you know, well beyond the, the sort of purely cleaning the streets. Um, so, yeah. you know, he, he had lots of really interesting ideas and comments mm. that, that remain uh, very relevant. And what I think is, is also really fascinating, um, you know, there's a lot of dialogue right now about monuments and memorials and, uh, you know, what does it mean to, to create a monument? And, and in a sense, uh, I think what you've created in a very non-traditional way is a kind of monument 
to LaGuardia uh, because it, it includes his voice. It, it you know, reminds us and, and perhaps informs those who don't even know that LaGuardia Airport is actually named for somebody. Um, and, uh, and, and in that way is just so much more dynamic and relevant and, uh, and I think, um, and, and of course it, it presents this, this landscape, this cityscape, this skyline uh, that he could have only dreamed of. Hmm. Yes, thank you very much for this great um, uh, um, um, explanation and interpretation about monument. It's really yeah, well, well uh, thought out. Yeah, I mean, this how you interpret it. And this walking, so I had only, of course, as an artist, and I didn't think so deeply about monuments, to be honest. So I just thought it would, it would be great uh, if people could walk past and, and, and the work would open up uh, um, piece by piece. Um, <clears throat> uh, like from the outside, you, you can grasp at night time, when it's lit inside, you can, you can grasp the whole, the whole thing. Of course, the, the quotes would be um, mirrored, but you'll see the whole work in one only from the outside. And in the inside, it's, kind of, it's, it's curved and you, you, step, you see it step by step. Um, so here it's a, a composition and the quotes also kind of repeat the composition that the, the skyline already does, like there is this up and down always in each other, and it's like a zigzagging curve, you can say. And so you have a visual interpretation about the city, the intersecting city of up and down, and, and you have also, um, also quotes about uh, happiness and, and social issues and everything, you know. Uh, one of the things I love about the piece is there is a real kind of uh, back and forth where you kind of want to sort of stand back from the piece to, to see the overall, uh, you know, composition, though, as you said, you, you can never see the whole thing. It's so huge and you have the different levels, um, but also it, it draws you in uh, and you, you want to see very closely because the resolution that you photographed at is, is so high that there is just breathtaking detail. Uh, <laughs> you're given the scale. It's astonishing yeah. to yeah. actually, right, I mean, there, like you, you can sort of look into windows and see uh, you know what see an interior inside an apartment building uh it's, it's sort of a very new york experience in a way that's true that's absolutely true you have uh, the whole thing from the distance and you have really um, the experience of very closeness yeah that's very new york there's um and it's 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 possible to have different perspectives in the space because there is a ceiling as i explained earlier and spaces open up again like here, this is, I found this particularly funny or um, remarkable, this uh, finger tower that has this absurdity in its architecture itself because it's a space that is already um, created through um, and a kind of negative space. No? It is like the distant space between buildings that they built another small tower inside. <laughs> and, and so in, uh, flipped upside down, now it points out um, uh, the foreground of the city, like the project houses. And there's this uh, a, a quote to it, which I really like also. It's, uh, it is, shall I read it again? Sure. <laughs> it's of course, uh, uh, Lagarde, I shall not rest until my native city is the first, not only in population, but also in wholesome housing, not only in commerce, but also in public health, until it is not only out of debt, but abounding in happiness. This was in 1934. And this is the top of this open space. And there's, um, I like that they appear, uh, the housing appears almost like uh, stalactites. When, when they're upside down. So I'm very curious to go finally and see it, how the houses look upside down, because I have only the detailed view and the very distant view on my computer and in the model, you'll see later. 
<laughs> and some of the houses look really funny, like the H building. I call it the H building. Is the Copper building or what's it? How's it called? Cooper building. Cooper building. And it's. Um, I think it looks like a, a dancing building. It's like the letter H. Um, so what uh, what happens when the houses are upside down? New Yorkers can also tell me. <laughs> so this is, and it's nice that it really seems to work in the in the winter sun when the winter sun is low. That it throws the image actually into the space and on the on the ceiling. So it is a, a large diapositive actually, which uh, which is projected. You know? And people walk over the over the projections like here thank you john girardi for sending this image <laughs> and uh yeah this is this is it my presentation and we should go to the studio so this is the model i was just talking about you saw you saw in the in the images and he is going to show us a little bit the space from the model because this is the vision that we are having here and how we are planning it he let actually build the model in a very short time. Uh, That's your your that, studio uh, colleague. Yes, he's filming at the moment. Um, and I was already working on the images while she built the model and then we could assemble it uh, and see always how it would look like. There are lamps that would imitate the, the sun for us now. Because when he, he also is on, is on the sunny side of my studio. So at daytime, at noon, uh, it comes it comes in and um, um, I see the sun reflecting is is really like in real I hope and yeah it's funny I have a road also <laughs> just a little larger <laughs> like in the airport there's also a road in front of it um, right so yeah uh, <laughs> it's it's so amazing to to realize that you you know conceived this created the model you know but you've only been able to experience the work in sort of i don't know what the scale is one to a hundred or this one to fifty yeah and one to ten to your wall but a bit earlier but i've been there to test install do you remember we made one yeah. stripe one yeah. strip we we installed and then I, I i went back it was 20 february 20 2000 20 and then uh, lockdown happened yeah thank goodness we got to do the test at least but uh, this but was the amount of public art fund wanted to do the test i didn't think it was necessary but it was really good because <laughs> put it the team installation team and do it do it without me that was really great yeah well i, I <laughs> our our team uh of course was very passionate about about this project and very excited to to help you and do everything we could to uh to make it work and and of course you realize it uh during a pandemic so it was it was kind of an extraordinary accomplishment for for everybody yeah absolutely um, so, uh, yeah. thank you very much and then i uh, i sent it to uh Dusseldorf and Dusseldorf printed it company and it was also amazing they had lockdown then and um, yeah so hopefully I'll come this or next month to see it. Um, One of the things that uh, I don't know if how you perceive it from the model but when you do see the piece in reality and I hope now that people are starting to travel here in the US, you know, more and more people are able to experience the, the work firsthand. Um, it's quite disorienting because you you sort of walk in and you see, you know, maybe a, a couple of panels that, and you think, oh, it's it's buildings, and and you can sort of some appear to be kind of like rights, right size up you right side up and then you know you see others that, that are then kind of floating in space and they're <laughs> kind of different color and it's it's kind of like you're it's like what is going on here you know it, it's it, it there's a sort of abstraction that you experience as you as you kind of start to experience the work 
Okay, interesting. So I really, I'm really, really curious to see it. And, it, and, and I'm missing this so much that I started um, to actually work with the, the, with, with the material still. So I, I went on working with the photographs and I did this um, in the last summer. Um, I did this um, silk screen prints and I'm doing them now still. Um, um, so I, I wanted to, to find this um, interesting intersection between foreground and background and emphasize them this golden set screen or darker set screen. And I've, I've used this technique also. Um, I thought they're like posters and it's, it's nice to have the quotes set screened or the background like a, a layers. And then um, um, because it's also, if you film here, yeah. This is like a layer also the, that brings out the text and you can, you can also look into, in, into the details I showed earlier in the photograph from the airport. This is, yeah, coincidentally the same detail. Oh. And um, yeah. And what about, so, the, what about the color composition? How did you, how did you develop you know, the, the color, which is obviously um, not not naturalistic, uh, you know. It it's very painterly. The colors, yeah. It is like a, a, um, it had to be a transparent image for me always. I didn't want to close off the glass, and so I took from the night views. I took out all the dark, uh, all the black, all the dark in uh, dark factors of color, which made the um, which brought out opened up all these. Um, uh, weird colors, like a little bit like greenish, bluish, um, reddish tones, and and so I, I worked in a very painterly way with them. That's true. Yeah, one of the yeah. one of the most beautiful ways to experience the work is you know when the sunlight is is flooding in, uh, because all of those colors, those rich, beautiful tones, um, are are sort of you're bathed in that glow. And it, it's kind of like the most beautiful stained glass window, you know, cathedral-like experience. Uh, so mm. I, um, I don't know if that's something you imagined, but it, uh, it, it's very beautiful. Oh yeah, thank you. Well, I have, um, I'm, um, this is a this is test from glass I'm doing. I really like this. Uh, appearance that you have, like here is the glass in the window. I'm doing this uh, test now for another commission, but I'm using the same photographs um, in, in these test print. And I'm also doing additions now on glass, like this one is a silk screen image. It's a, it's a silk screen on glass, um, which um, ceramic uh, colors on glass, and this is a dif different techniques. And, and so, um, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm using this in different testing, still different possibilities of using glass in in buildings, but also in my work. So then I started. The funny thing was when I, I made the uh, this is the, the film material that is in the airport and it's mounted. We, we mounted it on plexi to have a look like in the in the light and see is it. Um, uh, the right color, you know. So that then I left when I couldn't go to New York. I was left uh, in the studio with all these tests, and I started to cut them up and make sculptures out of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and I'm still doing this now because I also like, as you say, the colors and the um, illuminosity. I would you say that the, the, the brightness of the colors when when light comes through. So yeah. here you have examples, and also in plexiglass you can find this uh, fluorescent pieces so I've, I'm combining these together and it's like the idea is to, to, to bring it all in one tower or which is a could be a building or a figure so it's like the, everything all the ideas that are from the airport actually or from this um, up and down have them not only in the prints but also in in towers or in columns sketches like um, yeah and so these are the new ones so that's preparing them and they might show them before an exhibition so these are there are also some uh, excerpts in it from from the speeches. Um, no time for political fence building. 
so it's always this this uh, idea of myself of having having a photograph of bringing it into space by overlaying overlaying a, a notion of something of a memory or a, a recognizing another space a history something into into space while you move around and here's another nice detail that look like here you see all the, the windows again and uh, yeah, you're also uh, turquoise colors. So in, in in the night skyline, like this is a detail from the night skyline in the airport. Um, it was important to keep the notion of a night skyline, like of 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 the night in New York, but still having colors and no yes. darkness. So that was a challenge. It it had yeah. yeah. also the like because yes. New York generates so much light as a city. It always feels kind of light, so even even in the middle of the night. Um, so it's it's a, it's a nice correspondence, and and I see behind you there's a, there's a different material. This one is a curtain. Yeah, amazing. I made up um, a composition of windows that were also made in New York, like photographed in New York, and I printed them up. This is a test on silk. But I printed in on a different on um, uh, polyester material in January and installed it in an exhibition here in, in Berlin, um, which was in a storefront exhibition. Because we had a lockdown in, in, in Berlin since recently. And uh, in winter, it was only possible to see artworks through windows. And so I installed it. Do you have a photograph? I can show you. Okay, here is the. You see that? This was in a, in a magazine. This is um, the photograph. This is uh, the, the storefront. Berlin Weekly is a little gallery here, very close by where my studio is. And and, and so I installed it. Um, uh, there, it had the title Quarantine. So it is about individual, like individuality and, and collective experience. It's like a, people are it's isolated, a, but also collective. Hmm? It's a lovely kind of double metaphor for the experience that we were all having of, you know, looking through windows and not being able to, like still trying to experience things, but through a filter and- uh, yeah. yeah, like now we're having this filter of conversation also. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. But it's, of course, it's also enabling something that we couldn't do otherwise, you know, have a visit to your studio while we're still in uh, in New York or wherever people could be listening from, you know, and watching from all over the world. So this is true. So next time we are making so if if I can't come to New York, then we are making a visit in the airport, and I I come with <laughs> I come I come I zoom into it. So I'm just gonna... <laughs> I know we're we're um, we want to have some time for questions, but maybe okay. just before we do that. T tell us a little bit about the next project behind you that you're working on, I know. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'm working on, on a larger commission for the Bundestag in, in Berlin for the government, a new government building. And this will be a, a combination between contemporary photography and, uh, and, and for photographs from the image archive, the National Image Archive, which is, uh, which is on the other side of the street. And so I'm using I'm using historic photographs of, of the democracy in Germany, but combining them with my own photography and the building that was there before. Like this is a this is a slab building from the GDR that was taken down and, uh, and, and replaced by a new one. And uh, and the entrance ways from this old building, where people still have a memory to that that, that will work in the new building then again. So it's a combination. There's also a, a, a large image of, of our Bundesverfassungsgericht, which is the Supreme Court in Germany, which is really always important, especially now in Corona times. It was even, it had a really strong voice, and this is um, and, and it's more the reference to the architecture that they are having. Like it's an op open glass architecture, the Bundesverfassungsgericht, and I'm, I'm referencing this. Also, a little bit like a, 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 a statement of architecture that it's more open and glassy again, glazed and not so closed off like it is contemporarily in Berlin. So, yeah, this is what I'm doing at the moment. And, it will be. 
It shows the, the pixelated. Uh, so it's going to be printed in large dot, dots, like this is from the close. So it's actually the opposite than the, than the Sydney and New York work, because it's, it's going to have a, a, a rougher resolution. In dots, they will be programmed and have different, different directions. So it's kind of the, the, the image will, will kind of disappear from the closeness. It will, will be abstract, but only from the far you'll see it. Um, you'll recognize the image, um, like from the other side of the street. Mm. Yeah. Right. So I'm curious it works as a planet. This is also silk screen on glass. It has really bright colors. Yeah, but it will be. It will be. Uh, it, it has been postponed for a full year again. So working here is very slow <laughs> in comparison to the airport in New York, which was very, which was very fast. Yeah. Um, so, so all right. Well, look, that's fantastic. Really great to get a look around the studio. And I think we do have some questions. So, um, so why don't we shift? Do you want to sit down and and hmm. we'll? Uh... Oh, there's another larger printout we can point out here. Uh, this is the larger size of these prints of the posters. Beautiful. One of my favorite expressions also, like earlier, money in and of itself just cannot win a campaign. Yeah. Underneath, that was really coincident to have Gotham. <laughs> this was, this was a, I think it's a petrol station. Oh. Uh, in, in Queens. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, one of the questions, uh, well, Sabine, you're flipping. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, and um, one of the questions actually kind of uh, connects to the um, uh, the model you were just showing us that includes some historical photos, because one of the questions uh, from Linda Larson was about whether when you were doing the research, you looked at sort of photographs of New York from the time of LaGuardia. And if that was something you kind of thought about in, in your process, because uh, obviously the skyline oh, yeah. thing was very, very different. Maybe the Chrysler building was just yeah. brand new. Um... Yeah, this is an, an interesting question. Thank you. Yeah, of course, I, I look to the photographers like the Steichen phot photographs and all the, the photographs of the, um, the historic photographs. And also um, the fair, for example, I wanted to include photographs from this, uh, uh, um, from this world fair. It was, when was it 36 or so, when he had the world fair and, and LaGuardia called the pavilion actually democracy. And I loved that. And I wanted to include that historical image from this democracy in the in the in the work and uh, so this is at the spot where now the globe is in queens in the in the park you know the the beautiful the sphere in the in the meadow meadow park park, park in queens and um, at the same point he had this thing meadow crusty but then i so I, I made tests with these photographs also but then i realized it's it, it wouldn't work it would be too much so I thought this is um, I have I have the contemporary photographs of the city of today and and have only the notions of the like the past in these the double notion of the past and present in the words. Right. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think that that works. Uh, there are a, a few sort of questions on on your technical process. So let me kind of wrap those together. Um, there's there's sort of curiosity about the equipment that you used, you know, what kind of camera, what actually was the resolution uh, of the images, and how, how durable is the, the final printing uh, on, on the transparency? Yeah, hello, hello colleagues. <laughs> Not only <laughs> <all this> knowledge. <laughs> I share my knowledge for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's um, it was a phase one camera, 150 uh, back. Um, the back was 150 um, megapixel 
resolution. At this point, it was the highest I could get. It was in Sydney, I had the 100, the 100, and New York was already a uh, year, uh, year later, was uh, 150. So I think this is the highest you can buy on the market. I, I think, I guess NASA has a higher one or so. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but it is not only the camera, it's the way how we photographed it. So we stuck together many images. This also increases the resolution. And I, had the, I was lucky to have a, a colleague, um, a, a, a professional photographer, I'm saying, because I'm more a sculptor coming with me and helping me. And he's so skilled with, with all the, like also photographing at night and everything. Like I'm using, I'm using these larger cam cameras too, but not all the time because I'm working with all these different materials. And so he's using this more often and we were really a great team together because we had only short time and was were photographing all the time in rain, in wind. <laughs> and these cameras are very wind sens sensitive. Right. <laughs> Right. And, and what about the durability of the, you know, the... the oh, yeah, of course. Uh, the durability is, um, there isn't research yet, so, but uh, as the sun comes in, I wouldn't use it in a different building than the one in New York. Like, uh, the glass has a, a, a very high UV factor. It comes with a UV factor itself. And so um, the nice thing about the film is that it has this Dear positive effect that it's really photographic um, quality, which is also a challenge because um, it is really like a photograph, and if you blow it up, it becomes blurry. Whereas when you trans transfer it into a silk screen, you have a, a kind of a raster to it, and it resolves in a or opens up in more in a in a different in a different resolution, more natural resolution. But uh, I think it lasts. We don't know really. I mean, it is maybe 10 years or 20 years. It depends how strong the UV can be hold off by the glass. Um, the most durable would be a different technique, but we, we hope it lasts as long as possible. Then it has to be new printed, which is possible as well. No? Right. Yeah. Um, one of the questions um, that's come in is, is really asking about um, I guess your theme and variations, do you typically sort of return to material that you've, you've photographed and, and use it in different ways, different scales, the way you are doing with the, the skyline photos? Ah, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, yeah, I do actually. I have a photo archive where I'm, uh, I'm keeping all the photographs that I've that I did, and I'm I'm um, also also before when I did photographs of storefront windows that many people might know myself. Um, I, I I sometimes photograph them and then use them five years later or so. Like um, it's not like a I'm not like this uh, um, photographer who shoots and publishes it. So it's like it's more like keeping a memory of images. And using them, and and if I, I find a purpose, I need to include them into an installation or so. Right. Bits um, of thoughts. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, George Bulow is is commenting that he could imagine, you know, your approach here being used to great effect in in other sort of public buildings. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I, in fact, you are working obviously uh, on, on the Bundestag project in, in Berlin, uh, though that's going to be screen printed rather than the applied uh, film, correct? Yeah, this one, yeah, this is going to be screen printed and last forever. And in Sydney, we had both. We had uh, the, the facade was, was also ceramic printing, digital ceramic printing. And this would also remain um, for as long as the building lasts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, just a, a kind of information point: is is the German Supreme Court going to remain on in Karlsruhe, or is it moving to Berlin? <laughs> I think it's not going to move to Berlin. I hope so because it has this beautiful Baumgarten building, which is a, a very democratic building. It's very modest. You hardly, um, you, don't, you don't recognize it 
from the outside that it is such an important building. Yeah. And yeah, a sixties building. I think they remain. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. It's it's good for some things from the sixties to be preserved, Sabine. Yeah, that's it. And also, it's a very decentral here. I, I yeah, I like the things to be decentral. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, um, I think we're we're just about out of time. There's um, somebody commented, which is lovely, maybe uh, a tip for for folks. Um, so uh, this uh, person mentioned that the work will probably look great um, on June 10th, that is um, next Thursday, for the solar eclipse. Um, oh. Which will be very early in the morning and one hour long. So, for hardcore folks, um, <laughs> <laughs> you could you could go and have an eclipse experience in. But isn't an eclipse that the sun goes away? I, I yeah maybe I mean no. yeah, maybe uh, it's kind of the transition or something that mm -hmm. will uh, yeah. Um, Anyway, it's a it's a, a little bit of information to, um, you know, to share. Um, but I think, uh, uh, as as opposed to an eclipse, um, you have you have shone your own light on uh, on your process, on your work, on your ideas, on uh, on how you created this astonishing beautiful piece, uh, this new kind of monument, if I can call it that, uh, and, and a piece that continues to, to, to change and, and reinvent, not just as you visit it at different times of day or times of year, but as, as the world changes and the different quotes take on, you know, different meaning and, and relevance. Uh, so, so congratulations, Sabine. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to come and actually visit you in Berlin uh, in person. But of course, first of all, you have to come. To <laughs> you have to come and, and see your work. So we're we're looking forward to that. Yeah, I really like. It. Um, thank you very much. Also, and uh, hopefully, we'll see each other soon in New York and. Maybe have a little meeting in the airport. No? Thank Perfect. you, everybody. Thank you, Public Art Fund again, and also Cooper Looking Union. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thanks, <laughs> bye bye. everyone.